Here at the start of our walk, we'll begin at the Cholja Bridge along the Olka River, right next to where Ichiban Confections would be located in Ijincho. I believe there's a restaurant right nearby, near where that vending machine is at. I don't remember what the building is, right directly to the left here. And though I mark this as taking place in Nogecho, where we're beginning the walk here, we're actually in Hinodecho, not too far away from Hinodecho Station. And as we go up this walkway, we'll eventually go into Miyagawacho, a different ward. And then once we get up to the bars, we'll actually be in Nogecho at that part. And some of the latter part of the walk will cross back into Miyagawacho. Sounds confusing. It kind of is. The wards themselves are relatively small. There's a bit of overlap in that. It was something I didn't realize at the time. I thought it was all kind of a part of the same place. It was a bit of a gloomy, overcast day when I had to film this. Although I'll take that over filming in direct sunlight. You'll see some of that already in the previous episodes and some of the later stuff I shot. It ends up being quite bright. There's a lot of glare on there. I didn't have the right filters to be able to kind of get rid of some of that stuff. Just a little bit of a tidbit there. The game footage did fade out there for a little bit, but it's kind of to space things out as this area is this walkway is quite a bit smaller in Ijin Cho. Although, funny enough, the outcropping here, like this little meeting area, ends up being bigger in game, which is surprising. There is a car park there, although no buildings in place of it. There's no like boundary that they decided to throw in place there, which is typical for the Like a Dragon series. Oh, and this is a spot where, in real life, I actually had to cut away because I found really cheap boss coffee, so I better have one of those real quick. Ho ho. Yeah, I definitely needed my boss. I think it's I think it's against the law for me to not have one of those once a day while I'm over there. With this section, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's recreated pretty well, although I will say, with how dirty the river is in-game, there's you're going to see some debris, you're going to see some things in the river in real life, but it is nowhere near as filthy. But I would say that would be the case for everything that we've covered so far compared to Ijin Show. That's it's a lot more rundown in game. We did skip a little bit there to come up to this hotel. It is a love hotel. There's a lot of them in the area with it being a bar and nightlife district. But there wasn't a lot in the real life footage there that was absolutely necessary to see. And there's the bar area right ahead of us. It was actually really cool as you kind of crest over that incline there. As you start to see the, the bar area show up, you're like, oh yeah, I've been here, man. You get a lot of those moments if you're really into the series and you start to see some of these things, you'll have many moments where you're just like, have I been here before? I'm like, yeah, you have. But now you're actually here in real life. Some of the history about Noge Cho, it does date back about as far as the Edo period, but in 1889, that's really where it started to come into its own. In 1872, I believe, that's when Sakuragicho Station had opened up nearby, and that's what allowed this area to prosper and grow into an entertainment district. During World War II, as the occupying forces, the U.S. occupying forces, took over most of the area, this became pretty popular for black market food stalls and black market sales because a lot of things were really hard to find in those days, a lot of different foods. I think this area became pretty well known for selling whale meat, which is... I know rather controversial, but in those days that was a really good source of protein for people to have when a lot of other meats and a lot of other goods were really hard to come by. We'll be taking another look around the bar area here. We're kind of going past it pretty fast, but we'll come back and start from the north here as we come across this other bridge. We'll take another walk south and get a better look at it. Having mentioned Sakuragicho Station already, the Tokyo Toyoko Line that ran to Sakuragicho Station for a long time, but in 2004, that particular part of the track ended up closing and cutting this area off. The area suffered due to that closure. There was less foot traffic, less activity coming into it. But in recent years, there's been a lot of new businesses that have moved into the area. It's been a bit revitalized and it's starting to recover from that time. I think the closure of that track at Sakuragicho Station coincided with the opening of the Minato Mirai subway line that runs from Chinatown up to Yokohama Station. We're heading along what would be an Ijincho, the northern boundary of the bar district. Dead ahead of us, when we cut back into the game footage, you just run into collision there, so we'll end up taking a turn down this way. 
This ramen shop on the left side, I thought was closed. And every time I've looked at it in Google Maps since then, it looks like it's closed. I don't think it is, though. I think it's just one of those old businesses that manages to remain in business for quite a long time. But looks like it, it's about to fall apart. That's just how some of the older buildings, some of those will last for a really long time until either they are forced to rebuild or the owner the owner passes away and someone else takes over the property and at that point they can redevelop it. It's just one of those things in Japan as well. A lot of old buildings, as much as you would like them to be around for a long time, some of them are old enough that they don't meet current building code. They're going to be a danger. You really, you're really, you not going to get, I think, a lot of fire danger anymore, but with earthquakes being a constant thing in the country, you're going to have to replace some of these spots with newer buildings that are built up to better code and can withstand those. Back towards the southern edge of the, the bars here along the river, and we're going to take a right-hand turn here and cover some of the other spots. We're really kind of covering in this video, in this walk, what can be seen here in game for the bar district and then a little bit of the extra side streets that are along the way since Hinodecho does go quite a bit further west and it's it's not a huge area oh the stone face here yes it does kind of sort of exist this is a soap land i think can't film there but a lot of naughty stuff i thought it was really funny though to think man they they saw this stone face and said you know what we're gonna have to put this on a building in game the spot over here off to the left, this is a corporate office for a ramen restaurant group. They do vending machine ramen as well. As we fade the game footage back in here, it doesn't really match up with what we're encountering on this road in real life, but it's more there to kind of cover what we would be seeing if you were to overlay both maps on top of each other. And as mentioned earlier, as we go over, we're going to take a left on this street up here. Hinodecho does go quite a bit further. And I imagine is, is much more bustling, but it's a little bit harder. I, I, as I mentioned before in one of the other videos, I was a little bit hesitant to film at night, partly because I don't think it would look too great with the equipment I was using. It would be a little bit too noisy, but at the same time, I also just want to be aware of whether or not I'm making anybody upset by filming, especially in nightlife areas, there's going to be bars obviously love hotels, stuff like that. You don't want to capture anybody's face. You don't want to, you don't want to step on anybody's toes. But it does seem like it would be a pretty neat place. So if you ever get the chance to pay a visit and take a, a better look around here than I was able to make a video, I'd like to see it. But yeah, it was quite quiet. That's one of the upshots of filming on the off hours is because you're not really going to encounter too many people. Maybe birds, that's about it. But this area definitely goes outside of what we see in game. I do wish I had filmed a little bit more, but anything beyond where the bars were at, I didn't know about and I wasn't entirely sure if I knew anybody that actually had taken a look at it or had spent much time in that area. We'll pick back up here and go to the north part of the bars again. Take another walk south and then go up onto the, the second floor and take a look at those. As I mentioned with it being off hours, all these establishments are closed. It's actually a Brazilian place that we just walked by there. You can't really notice it until you go onto the other side of the river. You go over towards Ukutomicho, which will be there very, very soon. You can see at least in Google Maps and on other stuff, I don't know if it was still there when I was when I was visiting, but there's a Brazilian flag that's on that particular establishment on the other side because all the doors are facing towards this street here on the first floor, but once you go up to the second floor, all the doors are facing towards the riverside. But with it being off hours, we can't really get a great look at what some of these places would look like on the inside. We'll cut to some footage of some of the places that you can access like Bar Rodriguez. 
I can only look through windows. And I actually felt kind of bad doing that because I'm like, man, if I walk up to one of these places and someone's like doing prep work, I'm just staring in there with my camera like a jerk. But you can see with what little we can see with the glare and everything, some of these spots are very, very small. And I would myself personally be really self-conscious about trying to film in those places unless, of course, you know, you can communicate. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's cool. But what if you have regulars, you have different people that show up that want to just drink they want to hang out and they don't want to be filmed i don't use the audio in most of these because it's usually me mumbling to myself or it's a bit too loud but i was actually asking myself about ready to go up these stairs like can i access this area until i realized oh yeah it's not blocked off i don't believe it's ever blocked off these doors obviously have locks and everything you don't see any major cabling going from here over across the river. Certainly like in Yakuza Like a Dragon where you see the Gomiju, they're, they're, they're pulling all the power from these, these poor bars and just siphoning it to, to run their operations. But it is really cool to see all this and to see all the different businesses and they're, they're packed in here. This is a lot like Shinjuku Golden Guy where you go there and there's just, there's a lot of different businesses that are shoved into this very small location. I feel like this is this is a lot smaller, but this is just one part of it. When you go west into the rest of Nogecho, you'll run into other bars as well. That'll be a goal of mine the next time I go back would be to try to figure out who I know that's gone to one of these places that wants to go with me and to be able to experience one of those uh, for the first time. So I've never really been to like a snack they call them snacks. The little small bars you see like this will be snack bars. I think that'd be a fun time. We'll approach the stairs back down to street level here in a moment, and that'll take us back over to Miyako Bridge, which will be the point where we close out this segment. My apologies for not having as much information to talk about here, as much information to share. My own knowledge of the area obviously is quite limited. But after the information dump from the last episode, it's kind of nice to have something that's a little bit more casual. Hopefully you still had some fun along the way and also got a pretty good sense on how Nogecho compares to the bar district in Ijincho. However, there is another thing we must touch upon here in this video. Right about now you might be asking yourself, Hey man, what about Survive Bar? You know, the de facto location for the gang in Yakuza Like a Dragon? One of the more notable locations here in the bar district? Well, I haven't forgotten about it, but I do have a little bit of a story to tell to explain why I haven't brought it up until now. As I was filming around Nogecho, I hadn't quite figured out where this location was. Thankfully, there was a helpful video on YouTube that alerted me to the basis for Survive Bar, which was Jazz Cafe Chigusa, the oldest surviving jazz cafe in Japan. That at least gave me a name to work with that I could plug into Google Maps, and right away it gave me a location. However, it led me to a spot that was over in between Landmark Tower and Queen's Square, which didn't quite seem right to me. The name was correct, the signage it was showing in pictures was correct, something just struck me as odd though. It wasn't a standalone building, it was in a relatively newish area. The name was correct, it was clearly a jazz cafe, but this was also not the place I was looking for. Doing a little bit more searching led me to their website, which gave me another address that actually took me back to Nogecho. The location on the map was within walking distance from the place I had already just left. With all of this in mind, I had already felt a little bit uneasy about being led to a location that clearly wasn't what I was looking for, and then finding another one that Google Maps wasn't giving me anymore. Unfortunately, my uneasy feeling turned out to be correct, as when I got there, there was nothing. As of April 2022, the original building had deteriorated to the point where it needed to be torn down, with the goal to crowdfund and build a completely new building that served as not only a museum for jazz, but also a brand new jazz cafe that would be placed there on the original plot of land. The spot that I had found over between Queen Square and Landmark Tower right now is a temporary location that they're inhabiting until this new museum slash cafe is built. So at the very least, Chikusa will live on in some way, shape, or form, but for those of us that were looking to visit or potentially go into the old building, the original location, 
Unfortunately, that's just a memory now, and it's gone forever. But on the plus side, going to that temporary location put me close enough to Landmark Tower where I could finally access the Sky Garden up on the 69th floor. Nice. While up there, you get a near 360 degree view of the city from the tallest point you can access. Even on a cloudy day like the time I visited, it's still a spectacular sight to see. And as we show those off, we'll bring things to a close here. I want to thank you guys for taking a walk with me today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, I hope to see you again as we continue to explore around Yokohama. Join us next time for part five, where we'll take a walk around the nightlife area of Fukutomicho.